Welcome back. We are going to talk about the level design here in Outer Wilds. This is something that is fascinating to me because Outer Wilds uses the same level design concepts as Skyrim and every other open world game. That means that these are probably universal. The first thing we need to understand is that the player is always going to want to find something interesting and go to it, at which point you should let them find something interesting and go to it. And when they go there, you should let them find something interesting and go to it. So here, for example, we've come over to this red planet because it looked interesting in the night sky. Now that we're at the red planet, we can see there's a lot of random things that might be interesting. Look, there's a glowing spike. Look, there's some kind of glowing plant. There's a smoke thing over there. And there's like some kind of weird wicker landing pad somewhere over here. All of these places are, are going to catch our eye and we're going to want to go and investigate them once we've reached the red planet. If we go to these places, we'll get leads on more places. If we go down there, we'll be able to go into the interior of the planet and see various things in there. If we talk to the guy in the North Pole, he'll tell us about the lake bed. Everywhere we go, we get leads on more places to go. And that is the most fundamental thing about open world design. As I've said many times before, you don't try and fill your universe with stuff. You try and direct the player to where you've put the stuff. And this is basically the clearest possible example of that because they literally put the stuff on planets and everything else is empty. But the same thing happens in Skyrim. Now there are some implementation differences between this and Skyrim because Skyrim happens uh, on a world where you can stand everywhere, whereas in this game there are vast stretches of empty space. In addition, Skyrim is, uh, you know, play at once, go through things, whereas this game resets constantly. So we'll be visiting this red planet, you know, a hundred times over the course of the game, no, no, no doubt. Whereas in Skyrim, you're probably going to pass through a town you know, two, th two times, three times, and then you'll be done for that playthrough. So obviously, the density and clustering uh, and forking is different between the two games, but they still follow the same basic pattern of showing the player something interesting and then when they reach it showing them something else interesting and when they reach that showing them something else interesting obviously these paths do eventually close down it's not like there's always going to be something else interesting but at the end of a path that's closed down you'll find a lead to a completely unrelated path that you may not have discovered yet like, oh, maybe you can go to the sun station from here. Did you know there was a sun station? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it's a great way to connect up the world and make the player explore it, regardless of where they explore. Regardless of how they get to places or what order they move uh, through the world, they are going to always have something interesting to see and do. And that is really critical to open world design. But it's not the only thing in an open world design. And this is something I've talked about a little bit with Skyrim. Skyrim has a couple different play modes. And that's important to understand because people have different pacing preferences when it comes to you know, how long they want to play dungeons uh, and how long they want to be in a town and how long they want to wander the world picking daisies. Each of these kinds of play modes in Skyrim uh, comes with different kinds of iconic visuals. And that means that as you're wandering through the world, you can often move from a uh, similar experience to similar experience because you know what visuals you're looking for. But since you can always see at least a hint of a different kind of visual, it's not a big deal if you suddenly decide that you'd like to change. Oh, are you bored of being in the wilderness then go to a town or go to a dungeon you can do that because they're not hard to spot just follow the road or follow that weird spire that you can see in the distance there's always some kind of indication pointing you to a specific kind of experience for when you want that kind of experience this game is the same way that said it's a little bit chunkier in general you would go to a different planet and I think that most players who play this game are like this. They're like, oh, you know, I've been on Ember Shard for a while or whatever it's called. I think I'll go to Giant's Deep and, you know, maybe poke and prod at some of the stuff I didn't really figure out last time. And then I'll go and I'll go over to uh, Bramble and then I'll try and figure that out and all that jazz. And so because of that, 
you end up getting some um, some good diversity in your experience. You play Giant's Deep until you get sick of Giant's Deep. And then you move on to something else. This approach is very, very similar to the way that in Skyrim you would switch between, you know, dungeoneering and town work and wilderness uh, stuff. Each of these kinds of experiences is unique and the player is encouraged to switch between them whenever they happen to decide they want to. That keeps the player's experience fresh and lively at the player's own pace. The player is never going to get switched without their permission, uh, so they can just, uh, you know, when they feel like it, it's always going to be okay to, to, to switch when you feel like it. And I think that that is a wonderful way to do things, and it's a really important um, way to think about your level design. And I actually have a video about that as well, uh, but I just wanted to give it absolutely concrete examples. You know, this is, this is how it all works. I don't think there's any need to um, keep prattling on about it. Those are the basics, and I uh, I was hoping that maybe uh, maybe uh, it would be helpful to see it in action in a game that is so incredibly different from the kind of open world RPGs that we normally talk about, because this isn't an RPG at all. The only upgrade you get is that you learn how to uh, how to go to sleep. <laughs> so, yeah. Very different game, same level design concepts. And to me, that means a lot. See you around.